December 21st, 1968. From its inferno of smoke and flame, Apollo 8 begins mankind's longest and most dangerous voyage. Destination, the moon. A quarter of a million miles across the void of space. Houston, Texas, many thousands of scientists, engineers, and workers of the National Space Administration, manning globe-girdling radar and computer networks, track the first giant steps of the Saturn launch vehicle hurtling three brave men towards the Earth's first satellite, the Moon. The huge booster, over 30 stories high, carries the Apollo 8 module into orbital speed. After two flawless Earth orbits, Space Headquarters radios to Commander Frank Borman that he is go for the moon, the first mortal to be ever thus directed. The order for manned exploration of the universe is given after the astronauts have been two hours, 42 minutes, and 18 seconds in flight. One hundred nineteen miles above the Earth, Borman restarts the powerful third stage engine and from 17,400 miles an hour accelerates to translunar velocity 24,200 miles per hour. And down on the right of the screen you can see the moon craft emerge from the powerful burst to continue on its way making the Yuletide of 1968 an unforgettable period in history. Over Hawaii, these vivid last pictures as Apollo 8 levels off for the void, with navigator James Lovell plotting the course. The Apollo ground team, digesting masses of data from the astronauts, studies every variable for the lunar rendezvous. The craft is now aiming for that point in space, 63 hours and 230,000 miles away. Man's greatest adventure since 1492, when Columbus sailed an uncharted sea. These dedicated men and their amazing computers back up the three voyagers, still visible from Hawaii. The liquid hydrogen upper stage exhausts itself for the final spurt from the Earth's gravity. At three hours and 21 minutes into the mission, the Apollo 8 shakes free from its last booster engine and goes on its own. The first test of the service propulsion system proves a success. The first television broadcast from the astronauts about to show the people at home the initial legacy of their daring leap into the future. The first pictures of their warring, troubled old Earth from beyond the beyond. An angel's view of the small ball wrapped in clouds and spun in immensity. At mission control on December 24th, time for a critical decision has arrived and the astronauts await their most important command, whether to whisk around the moon and zip back to Earth or go into lunar orbit. The craft is dead on target, a sighting confirms, and 68 hours and four minutes after launch, Houston radios, you are go for LOI, meaning play rings around the moon. At 89 hours, 19 minutes, and 30 seconds, first orbit time approaches, and its beginning is made at exactly 90 hours. Now the trio become the first mortals to ever see the darkened lunar backside. Then, after 45 minutes without radio contact, they jubilantly proclaim the achieving of the first moon orbit by a manned craft. And forthwith comes a steady stream of eyewitness reports that will entail the rewriting of all the textbooks on lunar lore, while they search for suitable spots for another Apollo team to land on that forbidding surface, revealed in all its weirdness from an altitude of only 67 miles.
In all, they make 10 orbits, and during the circling, they make two telecasts back to Earth, snap innumerable photos, shoot movies, and conduct experiments. In the late hours of Christmas Eve, the ground crew continues alert, but the astronauts put aside science and engineering long enough to speak as men to all the people on Earth. For all the people back on Earth, the crew of Apollo 8 has a message that we would like to send to you. Merry Christmas, and God bless all of you, all of you on the good Earth. Now the final step. In the grip of moon gravity, they must reignite the service propulsion engine and begin the long drive back to Earth. If the engine fails, it's fini. But Apollo perfection is not to fail. They break free, homeward bound. The splashdown south of Hawaii, December 27, 4.51 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. 147 hours, 590,000 miles after launch, and about 7,000 yards from the carrier Yorktown. They have survived the highest re-entry speed yet accomplished, and the historic mission ends 11 seconds ahead of schedule. Helicopters pluck the men, now heroes to the entire world, from the briny, and bring them to the carrier's standing box. Weeks of the most painstaking debriefing lay ahead, but on this day, the Apollo 8 crew are history's newest immortals. On this day, the names of Colonel Frank Borman, U.S. Air Force, commander of the epic flight, Captain James Lovell, U.S. Navy, the craft's navigator, and Major William Anders, U.S. Air Force, lunar module pilot, take their place with Columbus, Marco Polo, Magellan, et al. They have fulfilled one of the oldest dreams of men, to shake down the dust of home and try the vast unknown, to visit the moon, and then to push on as far as courage would carry them into infinity. The pioneers of the true exploration of the universe, not to conquer, just as seekers of new worlds, new truths, new ways. America's moon pioneers, saluted by a grateful nation. Christmas 1968 saw a new age reshape man's destiny. <laughs>